What it do, what the business is, my ninjas. Welcome back to another video. As always, I appreciate y'all. Super grateful for all my ninjas tapping in with your boy, the Network Ninja. So, um, if you don't know, I've talked about my background in previous videos. Go ahead and check them out if you want to know a little bit more background on me. But I spent a majority of my networking career working in the NOC for an MSP as a network admin, just doing basic stuff like VLAN changes and troubleshooting basic networking issues, right? And don't get me wrong now, that exposed me to a lot of stuff, right, as far as different networking environments, uh, a lot of different technologies like low balancing and Palo Alto firewalls and FortiGate firewalls and stuff like that and a lot of different complex issues as well but in the past few years I've been working as a network engineer so in this video I just wanted to share like the day-to-day -day that I do as a network engineer and what I've noticed like were three major things that stood out to me when I made that transition going from a network admin to this kind of network engineering role because those roles are completely different. And I just wanted to share that for anybody that's just beginning out there. And we use this um, term engineers. So I just want to kind of like define that for somebody that's just beginning. Cause when I just started out, I didn't know really what an engineer was doing on a daily basis, right? I was more focused on what a CCNA or a network admin is going to do. And then, um, I also just want to share my perspective, right? Document and share my perspective for people that are already in this role, because as you know, if you're working as a network engineer, this role can mean a lot of different things, right? And it's just going to depend on what you signed up for, what kind of organization and how, how your organization is structured and all of that kind of stuff. So that's where I'm coming with for this video. But as always, before we get started, you already know I'm trying to get turned up. I appreciate everybody for subscribing. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content like this coming from the boy. You, let's go ahead and just dive right into it with the first thing that really stood out to me when I made that switch over into the networking engineer role. And that's going to be project work. And I would say like project and documentation work for project work. I had to grow into this and get used to it because it was definitely something new to me. And for an example, a project could be anything from iOS upgrade. Uh, that's like something like a recent project that I can think of that I've been involved in. And that is really for that kind of project. I, I was really responsible for configuring routers and, you know, getting them and I work from home. So I'm configuring them here at the house and then I'm shipping them out to wherever they got to go to to these remote locations right and to configure them all i'm doing pretty basic stuff just copy and paste if you know how to copy and paste you could be a network engineer but at the same time don't get it twisted because it's not just copying and pasting that config because i'm getting the template so in this company we got different tiers right so i'm like your tier two engineer mid-level support kind of engineer and then you got your tier three engineer and why is he a senior engineer well he got more time in the game he's he been doing it for 20 years so he really builds out the config and everything and the template and everything like that as far as what's going to get implemented into the network and then he will do what they call a knowledge transfer down to me which is tier two somebody that's only been doing it for a couple years but still has a deep understanding of networking concepts and protocols so when he my responsibility is to not just copy and paste stuff but to know what's going on with the config right i need to know when he's saying hey we're using object groups here instead of acls where we used to use it here um, before the ios upgrade now we're going to be using object groups because it's more efficient and just helps the network run smoother and i'm supposed to just be able to know that I'm not he's not there to um, give me the fundamentals of ACLs and object groups that's something that I should know and as a network engineer you they're expecting you to already kind of know this stuff not 
not for you to sit there and try to study and learn it but yeah you might not know everything but they're expecting you to brush up on it do some quick research and be like oh i got it i got it and just understand you might have a few questions about it but not as much as somebody that is really like just two years in the game and they don't even know anything about networking right that that level of knowledge that gap is going to be there so that's what i'm doing for that kind of project another kind of project could be a network upgrade right where i'm actually going to the site and i'm installing networking equipment and i'm cabling everything up and i'm also configuring the devices there again the senior engineer he is going to come up with all the configurations uh so for example we had a client where they had a mismatch of kind of all these different vendors in their networking environment they had cisco switches they had a ubiquity switch and all of these things and they were connecting all of that just to get their stuff going and when we took it over we pretty much just ripped all of that out and then the senior engineer came up with a proposal for juniper equipment because it was cheaper for them better cost for the company save them some money right everybody understand that it's all about that money so if they save them a couple dollars whatever it is if it saves the business a couple dollars they're gonna go with that and then also there they really didn't need cisco and ubiquity switches there's really no need for that and then it just made everything more uniform more organized easier to troubleshoot when stuff is more organized like that so those are just a few examples of just projects that i've been involved in that i can think of um most recently and then as far as documentation goes in the knock or as a network admin when you're documenting stuff you're really documenting processes and procedures on making sure everybody is on the same page of who to call or what device um what device does what and those kind of things and it's really for your personal knowledge base and to share amongst your peers but as a network engineer my documentation game is more focused on the project we're documenting inventory we're documenting uh, stuff like backup configs we're documenting where things are at like that network that we just upgraded there's a switch one two and three in the idf closet and switch four and five are in the lobby things like that right and then um just making sure all of that information is organized and in one place and easily get to even uh going as far as to take pictures hey we got this patch panel here that connects to this switch and these cables go here and take pictures of that and put that together with network diagrams and make sure everything matches up with our network diagrams and keeping all of those things up to date. That's the project work and that's the documentation that goes behind it. That explains some of those things that I'm doing and that really stood out to me that you don't do when you're working the knock. Number one, you don't have enough time to because you got calls coming in, you got emails to answer and you're dealing with, you're dealing with end users and technicians more frequently than you are as a network engineer where you're more in the background and just really dealing with the network admins or your NOC team and leadership teams like that when you're a network engineer. So the next thing that really stood out to me after that would be my workflow. So my workflow really changed from being this nine to five, just clock in, clock out kind of thing. As a network engineer, all of that is out the door. Um, you can get a call in the middle of the night you can get a call during the weekend um it, it really doesn't matter you're pretty much at, at, at this company that i'm at there's other companies where they have what they call an on-call and they can rotate engineers in and out but this company is so small that i work for that i'm on call but i'm really not on call but i'm pretty much the only guy that they can call that has knowledge of the network at my level so I am kind of like on call, you could say, because I'll give you an example. I was at a birthday party recently for a friend and their kid was having a birthday party. So I bring my kids out there. It's on a Saturday during the middle of the day. But the knock calls me for a network outage, uh, saying that a firewall is down somewhere. And the knock team, they really don't deal with the firewall as much as I would um, being a network engineer. So 
they have to escalate to me. There's no other escalation point. That's what I would have did in there when I was in their seat. When I'm a network admin, I just give that over. We got other stuff to get to, right? And plus, we don't have the expertise and that deep understanding to figure that stuff out. I, I can't say no to that. I still have to take the call and I still have to go figure the stuff out. So, and that just was just me jumping into it. And I end up, since I know the network, right? as a network engineer um i have more behind the scenes access to topologies and stuff and just looking at things i was able to ping a few switches and i was like well wait a minute there's not really a network outage here then i look at our monitoring tool and it's not matching up with the ip that we had documented for the firewall so it, it just lost the monitoring part of it so it was that the firewall was down but just from a monitoring perspective so it was really like a cosmetic issue than an actual real network outage so i was just able to tell the knock to just go ahead and um, cool out drop that down you know uh drop the priority on that ticket down and we'll address it on monday which is just me escalating to the tier three he's the one who work with our monitoring team and our tools team or whatever and got that firewall to be monitored so i told them the ip change and they have to figure out what that is because that's not at my level my level is really to just know that it's being monitored and stuff it's not for me to work with the tools team so the workflow is definitely different because although the issue is more complex i also have privilege to different kind of information than the knock to allow me to get to an answer quicker to minimize downtime that's the whole point as the networking engineering role of what i've seen is you're you're really uh brushed up on all the information of the network so that you are minimizing the downtime of the network okay the final thing that really stood out to me is going to be meetings so as a network admin when you went to meetings they were few and far between and it was really just leadership talking to you making sure everybody's on the same page going over procedures and processes and making sure that you know who to call who not to call and how to troubleshoot common networking issues right that was the focus of the meetings where as a network engineer everybody is what's the deadline of this project why are we taking so long on this project what tasks are we getting stuck on for the project or what tasks are we doing to make this project move smoother and get it pushed before the deadline? And then we talk about upcoming projects and things that we can do better as a team and things like that. And um, also how can we help the leadership teams of the knock and stuff like that to really keep down the escalations and really minimize total downtime again on this network. So I've learned uh, my meetings have to be more intentional. I gotta be more prepared. I have to be more organized, more disciplined to make sure that I'm on top of everything when I go into those meetings as opposed to just being more laid back in that network admin role. All right, so that wraps it up pretty much. Hopefully all of that made sense, everything that I was talking about. Hopefully you got some insight in everything as what I do on my day to day and again, uh, I need y'all to remember that this day of the day is different for every network engineer. This is just my experience, right? You have network engineers. I didn't even talk about this. You could do, be doing changes uh, day in and day out as a network engineer. You can be doing stuff like that where I don't really do that in my current role. It all depends on your organization. It depends on, you know, your specific projects you're assigned and it depends on the person who you are you know what you're going to be able to handle and everything and your leadership what they want to put on you and how big your company is and just a whole different a whole bunch of different factors can play into all of that so just remember that but what is consistent and what i do like about networking is that yeah there's going to be some days where it's business as usual but I like it when it's other days where it's something different, right? When you think everything, you got everything down packed, it goes zero to 100 real quick. And you're expected to, you know, know your stuff, stand on business and be able to figure things out. And just being right there in something that just catches you off guard is, 
it is definitely interesting keeps that mind going keeps your mind working it helps you to grow and everything so definitely gonna have to step up your game on them troubleshooting skills if you're a network engineer and as well as develop a skill of being more adaptable again because being woke up at two in the morning for like on-call workflow kind of stuff that's something that you're gonna have to adapt to you know especially if you got family and all of that kind of stuff everybody's gonna be affected by that right so those are things to just think about as a uh, you move into that network engineering role or as you pursue it again hopefully you guys found it useful you already know it's going to just help the channel if you subscribe go ahead and subscribe to my channel and i'm gonna keep dropping that weekly content as long as y'all just keep subscribing to me so i know that y'all want to see more of it and give the video a thumbs up and i'll catch y'all on that next video holla at me peace